I'm Stu, AG6AG. Today we're going to look at the Nano VNA H4 model. Now the H4 actually has a 4-inch display screen, so you can actually use that touch screen and actually be able to do some stuff with the device. Um, I like that because I can take it out in the field and I don't need to drag a PC out with me to use the software. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of try to go from soup to nuts on how to get the thing configured from that little bitty display screen to do um, SWR readings and stuff like that as well as take advantage of the VNA properties that allow you to check for uh, uh, loss or uh, shorts and stuff like that in devices that you can test as a pass-through. Um, I like this thing so much that I put a link for it down in the description. Uh, it's on Amazon under a hundred bucks and uh, you know, hey, it's a nice little value for that. Certainly less expensive than most of the uh, SWR meters out there. And if you're looking for an SWR meter, this might be a good option for you. Watch the video and you decide. Anyway, oh, and if you would, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, Click like. Anyway, with that, let's get on with this thing. All right, well, before we get started with the hands-on stuff for the Nano VNA H4, I wanted to talk a little bit about what a Nano VNA is, or a VNA in general is, and uh, kind of try to de demystify it just a little for you folks out there that don't really have a uh, understanding of what they do. Um, and... Not to say that I completely understand everything that you can look at and what it all means, but uh, VNAs are a very, very powerful piece of test equipment. And the reality of it is that the only reason that I bought a Nano VNA, uh, I actually had a mini VNA before that, which was had a, 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 a more test point uh, storage than the Nano, but that's a subject for another video. Um, Long story short, though, I basically bought it as a SWR meter because it was under a hundred bucks. Under a hundred dollars for an SWR meter when I bought it was a really, really good thing. So here's a picture, and this is right off uh, Amazon. Thank you, Amazon. Uh, I actually have a link to this product. Uh, on Amazon in the description. So if you click through there and buy it, uh, my uh, uh, XYL's affiliate program gets a poke. So I, I'd really appreciate it if you're going to buy one and you haven't to buy it through the link. Uh, your choice, though. Um, anyway, the Nano VNA basically is a two port analyzer. It has a uh, device under test port and then it has a uh, uh, forward loss port. Okay, we can talk about all the different things that the Nano VNA does, but for the purpose of what we're doing here, I'm only going to really talk about two or three different things that we can do with it that is something that you would commonly do in amateur radio. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at basically a Nano VNA. So you have a channel zero and a channel one port on it. And how do we use those? Well, Okay, we have our device under test that we can hook through channel zero, and what we get back is all the reflective stuff back from that device. This is how you would hook up for uh, SWR, this is how you would hook up for um, taking a look at reactance and total resistance and phase and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, this is where you'd get your Smith chart. Uh, which is all available on the Nano VNA. We're not going to go into all of that, but it's there and you can do it. Um, then, of course, we have uh, the other way to hook it up, which is you have a device under test like a uh, triplexer or a duplexer or a bandpass filter or um, a even testing a uh, piece of uh, uh, coax or something like that to see if it's shorted, things like that, all that can be done this way. There's also ways to do it. So, And basically how it works is data goes out on channel zero, goes through the device under test, whatever that may be, 
and it gets a reading back on channel one uh, and compares what was sent to what was received. I guess that's the easiest way to explain it, but this is how you can look at DB loss. This is how you can uh, see things that aren't right. That you, you know, if you're going through a ballon and you don't expect any DB loss, but you get a ton of DB loss through that ballon, that tell you, tells you there's a problem. There's also ways to test balance with special test setups and stuff like that. And if uh, these how-to videos are popular, I may just go deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole with that stuff in the future. But for right now, all I really want to do is, uh, you know, basically get you guys to where you're able to use this tool in a simple way and not have to hassle through it. So... As with all journeys, let's start at the beginning and let's start with calibration and testing SWR. Well, all right, so let's get started with some of the hands-on stuff here. Uh, this little gem right here is my Nano VNA H4. Uh, and um, let's go ahead and take a look at basic calibration. Uh, to start with, let's go over the controls a little bit. Here we have a power switch right there, as well as a selector knob uh, goes about, oh, 30 degrees in either direction, and then uh, if you push it, it basically selects. I have had mixed luck with the quality of this, uh, but um, I actually use this for the touch screen. This works really well, much better than my fat fingers. Anyway, um, Let's go ahead and go through the calibration. So this is, unit is fully charged. I recommend that you start out fully charged. Uh, and we'll go ahead and turn it on. Let it go through its boot cycle. We want to talk while it's doing this a little bit about the stuff I have out here for calibration. Um, what we have out here, right here, if I look inside this, I can see that there is a pin, right? Uh, this is a shunt or a shorted cap. You can make these if you want. You just need to connect the center pole to the outer pole and you're set to go with it. This is the one that comes with the device. Right here, this is the open. And if you look down in here, you can see that it just has a little cavity in there. The reason for that, the reason that they want you to use that rather than just go ahead and um, utilize just not putting anything on is it has a tendency to block stray RF and that can be an issue during calibration. So uh, your mileage may vary. In this particular video, we are going to use that uh, cap. And of course, the third one here, you can see that it has a little bump on the end of it, which is a resistor, and this is the 50 ohm load. Um, and 50 ohms, we're used to dealing with those, of course, with uh, oh uh, dummy loads for antennas, so we should be used to that number 50 ohms anyway. Now, um, talking a little bit about configuration, let me go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. So we get a nice shot at the unit. Um, when we do our configuration, there's an order that we need to get the unit set up in. Okay. It kind of goes set the frequencies. Okay. Um, make sure the frequency is set where you want it. Clear the calibration that's stored. Then go ahead and walk through the calibration and do the complete or full calibration on the device, okay? There are parts that I'm told you can skip, but I don't know if that's true or what the success ratio is with that or if it changes input, so be aware of that. Uh, once we do that, then we can save the setup. The real goal, though, is for your different setups, you can actually recall those. You may want to change a lot of settings. And let's go through the way that I calibrate and set up for testing um, for an initial project. So first off, I am going to use the touch screen. 
the first thing I want to do is I want to go in and I want to go into display. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my display format. And we're going to check SWR today. And I'm hoping you can see that it's not too washed out. So I'm going to select SWR. And I can see up in the corner up here it says SWR. If I click back in, it takes me directly back into the menu I was on. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to go back and I can set my scale. So scale division, what this basically means is for each uh, SWR unit, I have a different line. Now, I like to go 0.5 five here and just hit one X and that enters it. And you'll see up here that it has 500 M. Uh, and what that really means now is each division now is a half a SWR unit. Okay. So in other words, this is one to one where this little triangle is. And by the way, the triangle is always a reference point, so you want to keep that in mind, that that's the reference point of uh, whatever the setting is, whether it's 0 or 1 to 1, and this would be up 1.5 to 1, 2 to 1, so it gives me a little bit better slope uh, that I'm looking at. So we're going to go in again, and speaking of our reference position, the reference positions, let me, uh, let me back out of this, the reference positions are the bottom is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So they go up in order up the scale. Right now, the reference position here is 1. So my 1 to 1 for a reference of where theoretically the bottom or the top is, is going to be there. Now... Um, electrical delay, I don't need to worry about that. You probably want to verify that it's set to zero, but that's about all you need to do. All right, so I have that all set, and I'm also going to want to select the trace that I'm going to use. The trace I'm going to use in this case is trace zero, right? That's what I programmed all this for. If I change the trace, I have to go in and change all my settings again. So um, trace one is the one that I had selected, and that is the one that I am configuring right now. Now, um, as far as the format goes and the scale goes, that's great, but I also have to tell it what channel I want this trace to be associated with. And if we're looking at reflective, which is SWR, we want it to be channel zero. So there we go. So our ranges, at least as far as the display is concerned, are set now. And again, we have to go back all the way to the main menu to go to our next item. And our next item is going to be stimulus or stimulus. And what that actually is, believe it or not, is I'm going to program my frequency range in here. Um, if you know why they call it stimulus, uh, do me a favor and make a comment down below, okay? So I'm going to hit my starting frequency, and I want to see where I'm at for a uh, two-meter antenna. Uh, so what's my two-meter frequency range? Well, it goes from 144 to 148, right? What I'm actually going to do here is I want to go a little beyond that. So I'm going to enter in here, 1, 4, 2. I'm going to confirm it says 1, 4, 2 down here, and I'm going to hit the 1x. And now my start ah, is not right. Why? Guess what? I did it wrong. Here's where I went wrong, because... I do this all the time, and I want to show you what the real issue is here. So what I'm looking for is 142, but I have to tell it if I hit 1x, that's it thinks it's 142 hertz, and it will set it for as close down to the bottom as it can go, which is 10 kilohertz. So I have to hit M to get it to megahertz. Now, I want to hit my stop what my stop frequency is going to be. 
And since it's 148, I'm going to add two on the end of that. We're going to call it 150. And I always look down here to make sure I got my number right because, uh, you know, this touch screen's a little iffy. All right. Hey, it's sub $100 equipment. Okay. Expect a little bit of funk. We'll hit M for megahertz. And now I can verify that, yes, now I have my frequency in. So, what do we got going? Well, we've got our start frequency. We've got our stop frequency. We've got our display set up the way that we want it, the way that we want it. And now we need to go to calibration. So right here is Cal. Remember, I have to go back to the main menu, of course. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit reset. And that completely blows off any configuration that was saved in the system uh, in this instance. Now, I'm still at a point, if I wanted to go back to whatever settings was here when I started out, I could. But I'm going to warn you of a couple things. You need to calibrate this thing all the time. Uh, you take it out to the field or whatever while you're unpacking it, get it out there, turn it on a little bit, and then you need to recalibrate. That's just the way it is because calibration on these devices drift. Okay, so I've hit reset. Now I've hit calibrate and it wants me to calibrate and open. And I believe I look in here and yes, see that one is the open. And all the calibration that we do initially, okay, is going to be on channel zero. And remember from our diagram, channel zero is the one that uh, we hook our device under test to. And there usually isn't really a time that we're not doing channel zero, okay, um, for our um, calibration. So that is now set the open pin, and I'm going to say open. It immediately stores that. It shows a reversal. Now I have white letters on a black background, which means it's got it stored. I'm going to take this off, grab my shorted one right here, like so. Now we're going to go over here and we are going to click short. Now it wants to load. See this, I'm just going down the list. It's automatically kind of wandering me down the list, which is cool. So I put the load on. You can see it's the load. It's got the little cap on it. And you can use any 50 ohm um, load that you want. As long as there's 50 ohms resistance there and it's consistent. Um, and this is very, very low wattage. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very low power. So uh, you can put almost anything on there. You could probably put a, um, you know, a, a quarter watt resistor and it would work. Anyway, all right, so I've got the load. I'm going to say load. Now, this is, this is kind of a weird one, isolation. Um, they say you don't have to do this. You could just hit it and continue. Uh, but what it's really looking for is it's looking for me to move that dummy load over to channel one. So we're going to select isolation. All right, now it wants through. Now, the isolation and the through, I'm told, are only required if you are going to do, um, uh, what do they call it, uh, S21, which basically, or S12, which basically goes... Uh, between channel 0 and channel 1 and looks at loss. We talked about that a little earlier in the video. But as a rule, it's only one additional step. So I go ahead and just hook a cable up just to make the unit happy. Um, and there I am. All of these are selected. They all say that they're stored in there. So now I can click done. And now it's asking me where I'd like to save this. And I'm going to just save this on zero. But I could have different saves for different setups. And then all I have to do is uh, re, uh, uh, oh, uh, restore one of them and then just recalibrate and resave it. Um, anyway, we'll hit save zero. Okay. So we are fully calibrated now. Now, we can double check our calibration. We look up at the top and we can see, look at the level of our SWR there. I mean, it's, uh, it's huge because it's wide open. There's nothing there. Um, so why don't we 
hook the dummy load up, this 50 ohm load again, and see if we get to zero. Let's see if this works the way it should. All right, and when you look at that, we are one to one right there. Now you see this little marker here? I can move this marker with my slider. Uh, I'm going to try to do this and keep it in screen, but I'm going to move this marker to the center. If I double touch it, I can drag it over. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let me try it from this side, maybe. It's difficult because I have to be kind of on it. There we go. There. And that puts me right at 146.80. That's not where I want to be. And I hate to tell you this, guys, but I am... Uh, I'm left-handed, so I have a heck of a time uh, doing this right-handed. And if I don't like the granularity of what I'm doing here, if I can't get it right, I can always use the button on the top and slide it either way to adjust it if I'm having a little trouble getting it exactly where I want. All right, so we have this all calibrated. Let's check SWR on a real system. All right, so we have our antenna and we have our adapter in order to hook it to channel zero. So I'm going to kind of slip this in here and try to get it all hooked up. And try to get an angle with this that makes it a little easier. A lot of times what I will do is I will use a small or short extension just to make it a little easier to get to this. Um, go so we're all hooked up there and what I can see right away right away is that at number one or 146 I am 1.37 to 1 SWR is that acceptable yeah sure it is but I also see a couple other things here I see this going up on the lower frequency side and I see it going down on the higher frequency side. So ideally, where would I want perfect isolation, right? Where would I want the lowest SWR? Well, I'd want it right here. So what this is telling me is if I can, I should probably try to adjust the antenna to make it electrically longer, which means lengthen the antenna or um, lengthen uh, or change the ground plane if that's uh, something that might be in the mix. But remember, I don't have to. So now let's take a look though at where we're at on the edges, okay? And I'm going to try to do this. Let's see. Yeah, I'm trying to move right to, well, I'm pretty doggone close there. It's a little off. Let's see if I can, uh, there we go. 144 is the end, and that is 163, 1.63 to 1. Still more than doable. All right, double click up, double click, and down to the other side, 148. 1.34. Now, one last thing I'm going to show you that's kind of cool is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to pull my menu up. I'm going to, uh, you know what? No, I'd have to recalibrate the entire system. And I probably am not going to show you that. But what I might have done uh, if I was really trying to dial this in, is I might have changed my configuration in order to push farther out on this side to see how flat it was and if it was really worth me going to a lot of trouble to chase this. Ah, what the heck, let's do it real quick. All right, so through the magic of recording, we now have changed things around a little bit. Okay, I have changed the uh, start to 140 megahertz and the stop to 160 megahertz to kind of see where the center of this all is. Right there in the middle, that is 148. Okay, so it really looks to me 
like the lowest point, and we can observe this. Where is the lowest point? Uh, we're going up. That's actually pretty consistent all the way through there. So if I was, let's see, so 130, 130, 130. Okay. I, I would say that I could, uh, I could basically reduce this. Um, 135, 131, that was the lowest. And where am I? So really, where I'd like to be is about, oh, I would say a couple megahertz uh, down, right? I would, uh, uh, I would like to shift the antenna down that way. That tells me something, though. And I can actually use some mathematics to calculate the length out, but that really is a subject for another video. So we've looked at this now as a SWR meter, and you can see the value of this. I mean, I can sweep an entire range. Uh, imagine if you were out at field day or out at a park or whatever and setting up an antenna, and before you hook that very, very expensive uh, uh, transmitter into it and uh, pop some uh, of those great solid state finals, um, you actually could take a look at what is actually going to happen when you key that radio. So therein lies the real value. So let's go ahead though and take a look at the other side of this checking for loss through a device. And uh, we'll talk about when we want to do that right now. All right, so before we go any further, I just want you to understand what we were just looking at and what we want to look at here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove myself from the picture. So the test that we just did was based on what's called an S11 test, where it goes out one channel, comes back in the same channel, um, and... Uh, that basically gives us, again, the SWR and all that kind of stuff. What we're about to do is just a wee bit different. We are going to do a S21 test. And I don't know why they call it an S21 test. I, you know, I tried to figure out, all right, what port is what and all that. But basically, this is the design. This is what's going to happen. We are going to send out a signal out. Uh, channel zero, it's going to go through, and what we're going to use is we're going to use a uh, bandpass filter and sneak it on in and take a look at what the loss is, and most importantly, how little the loss is in the band that it's supposed to pass. All right, so uh, with that, you know what? Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're prepped now to go ahead and uh, test uh, the uh, S12 or whatever they call it. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to test a device and see what the loss is through the device. Um, right here, this is a Dune Star, and this is an HF uh, bandpass filter. It's for 14 megahertz, and we're going to go ahead and test this. We use these all the time at field day because we have a lot of antennas really close to each other. So let's go ahead and set up for that, all right? Uh, something very important, though. Before we can set up, we have to figure out how we're going to hook this up. Now, I have gone through my little bag of tricks, and I have come up with a couple cable uh, solutions here that will allow me to go from either side of the uh, uh, VNA into the Dune Star. And the reason we have to do this is during our calibration, we want to use the most that we can of what we're going to actually have as a test setup. In other words, when I do my through test, there's all sorts of little losses throughout this, right? But I don't want it to take that into consideration. So my calibration is setting a zero level 
That's why I need to do it with this cable setup. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Remember, as always, what's the first thing we have to do? Well, when we change something this radically, right, we're going to need to go through a complete recalibration. So let me adjust this in a little bit. Um, I'm going to do this sort of fast, okay? The only reason is you've seen a calibration. The important part in here is how to set up for this test and get my, uh, my stuff all set up properly. So let's go ahead. I'm going to turn this on. And what I need to do is I need to go in here and I am going to go ahead and work on my display. Okay. First things first, I'm going to select the channel I'm going to display, which is going to be channel one. Now, if I didn't want to use yellow, okay, I literally could change my trace to any one of these colors. Uh, I could do purple. Let's do purple. That sounds like fun. And we'll get rid of this, all right? And let's go back. So I've selected purple. My format is going to be logmatic, okay, or they call it logmag. What this is, is this allows me to see dB loss. I want to go ahead and uh, go back now. And I want to take a look at the... Uh, um, scale and format here. I want to take a look at the scale. So first off, my scalar division right now is at 10 dB. That's probably pretty good. We'll leave it there. And where is my zero? Let's see. What is my reference position? My reference position is number seven. So from the bottom, if I count it up, this would be the seventh line and that's going to be zero db right there so that's where i want to be right so that's perfect i like that already now we've got to set our frequency so again i got to move all the way back to stimulus and hit start now I am configuring for um, 20 meters, but I want to go a little beyond. And I kind of want the middle someplace at about, well, so how far beyond do I really need to go, right? I could do, I could add, I don't know, we could add 30 on either side, 30 uh, or 300 uh, kilohertz on either side. So what could, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go, since it's, 20 meters, I'm going to go from 13.5, so let me get that in, 1, 3, point, did I get my point? No, point 0.5 megahertz, 2, let's see, 2, and the top end of 20 meters is 14,350. So if I added another 50 to that, uh, that would be 14,900, right? Wait a second. What was my start again? Yeah. Okay, 13,500. So I need to add another 5. That would be, ah. 14,850, right? So our stop would be, I'm going to do this with this hand just because 14 dot, I get my dot. No, come on. Give me that dot. There we go. 850 megahertz. Okay. There's my span. So now, what do I want to do? Well, I think, one thing I want to do is I want to move this someplace out here where it's a little bit more reasonable. But what else do I want to do? Well, I am going to go ahead now and calibrate. Uh, but you know what? You don't need to see the first three parts of this. So I'm going to go ahead and pause, and then I'm going to take you to where I'm hooking up for the uh, through. All right? So stand by. 
All right, so here we are. We need to set up our through. I'm going to back the uh, camera out a little bit. So what I need to do is I need to take these two dangly cables and I need to put them together using a straight through where the uh, device under test is going to be. All right, now that I have that, I'm going to set this over here, and we're going to hook our wires up here. I don't really care what wire goes where, because it's not a directional filter. It's bidirectional. Either way, it, uh, it's going to drop dB. So, all right, so I have all that together now, and I'm going to let me zoom back in. Uh, yeah. All right, so I have that all back together. Now I'm going to calibrate the through. Boom. All right, there we go. I'm going to say done. And I'm going to save this as, uh, oh, let's save it as two. And there I am. All right, so what's left here, kids? I'll tell you what's left. We need to hook the device under test up. Okay, I'm going to let me back this out again. Hopefully I'm not making anybody seasick. And here, I'll just slide this over a little so you can see. I'm pulling out the center thing here. And now I've got to put the uh, Dune Star in here. Goes in one side here. We're going to go in the other side over here. slip this out of the way so we get our device back here and let's go ahead and dive down in and my goodness it looks like everything is passing there all right so that means that it pretty much is passing all of the data within that band now what do we want to do? Well, we're going to recalibrate now to go even farther to see where it falls off. So I'm not going to make you wait for that either. I'm just going to do it. All right, so I didn't want to bore you. So what I've done here is I've gone to 10 megahertz to 21 megahertz, and I can see... Up on the top, and what I can do here is, and I, I know it's hard to see what I'm doing when I do this, but and let me uh, let me go all the way back here. There we go. All right, so I now can uh, move this down and see what my dB loss is outside of the band, right? All right, so what I really want to do is I want to look at where the top of this is, right? There's my peak. Uh, let's see. There's my peak at one loss. Let's see, at the beginning of the band. Uh, come on. I'm going to manually move the marker rather than try to drag it. I'm going to take it to 14, uh, 14070. And I am at a 0.48 dB loss, so that's not too bad. Um, and let's take it up to the top. There's 14,400 past the top at about 71. So it's a little low, but not bad. 290, this is more than doable. This is more than doable. This is good. So our drop-off, though... And I'm going to talk about this just briefly because it becomes a subject. Um, there I am down at about...
about the beginning of the band for, um, or just before the beginning of the band for 15 meters. And here I am at about 10 meters, right? I'm going to say that I get into about a 30 dB drop. So what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and cut to a normal screen here. Okay, so 30 dB attenuation. There are all the formulas to calculate, uh, you know, wattage to dB, dB to wattage, all that stuff. Uh, but I can kind of do it in my head. Um, if... Uh, you have a 30 dB loss, and um, you're worried about your the harmonics that you're putting out, and you're blocking or reducing the harmonics an additional 30 dB, then that's pretty good. Okay, you're going to block most of what you're putting out. Uh, you might block it all with that. It might not be able to edge through. Because let's face it, um, no matter how good your transceiver is, it's going to put out some power on your harmonics, uh, the harmonics of your frequency that you're transmitting on. Um, anyway, the rule of thumb that I learned a long time ago has been 30 dB is where you want to test to at the edge of the bands that are not of interest, and this accomplishes that. Um, of course, if you're trying to go through a duplexer or a triplexer and have multiple bands on the same antenna and trying to use them at the same time with different radios, your mileage may vary on that seriously. Um, but with that, that's a subject for another video. Anyway, I kind of wanted to show you one other thing that, uh, well, drives me crazy. Um, you think that you know how much your unit's going to cost, right? How much is this VNA going to cost me? Well, there's a few other things you need to take into consideration. One additional thing I thought I should show you here is uh, this little box of connectors. Um, there's a lot of money tied up in this little box of these connectors. I mean, adapters and everything else, and that's the stuff that you need to make this all work. So keep in mind that it isn't really just the cost of the VNA or the other analyzers that we're going to cover later. It's also all the garbage that you have to get to do the calibration and hook them up and all the rest of the stuff that goes with that. All right? Anyway. Well, there you go. I hope I gave you enough information to get you going on your own uh, nano VNA. Uh, and I hope I inspired you, you know, to use this stuff and play with it because this is how we all learn, right? Um, if you have any questions or comments, make them down in the comments below. And hey, uh, don't forget to click like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, let's see. With that, oh, and in the uh, description, there is a link to go ahead and purchase this on Amazon, okay? And again, this is a sub hundred dollar piece of equipment. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to find a scanning uh, SWR meter that could do it for under a hundred bucks. Anyway, with that, this is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73, and I hope I hear you on the air.